Hello and welcome to part two of our CPD presentation, The Fundamentals of Radar. My name is Dale Jones and I'm Business Development Manager for Navtech Radar. Uh, just as a quick recap, we're a UK based company with offices in Oxfordshire in the UK. and We design and manufacture very high definition millimetre wavelength radar sensors. We've got about 3000 of these now deployed globally. And we sort of concentrate on three different product groups. The advanced guard side of the business is for providing ground-based security solutions, but we can also provide very accurate CP line monitoring for airports and that sort of thing. The clearway side of the business, they supply sensors which are used for stop vehicle detection on highways, uh, but they can also be used for incident management and collision detection within tunnels and on bridges and that sort of thing. The industrial automation division supplies sensors which can be used for controlling autonomous vehicles and also for automating industrial applications applications in very harsh environments. So in the part one of the presentation, we did a bit of a history on radar and how it works with some of the basic detection principles that are involved. What we're going to discuss today is types of radar. So a little bit about the frequencies that are available and what type of system can be used, but also some examples of where radar is suitable. So again, just as a recap, I'll just go over why radar is used for ground-based security applications. Basically, because we can provide much better wide area coverage, the system can be used to provide much better situational awareness for the, the operators. And as well as alerting them to potentially multiple threats, radar will also determine the precise location of those threats. And then using the advanced camera control capabilities that we have, we can track potentially multiple intruders across a site in real time so they can very quickly verify the alarms. And quite Quite importantly really this detection and tracking capability is available day or night and in pretty much any weather. Okay so why do people use radar? Basically with this type of system you can create multiple alarm zones each of which can have their own very specific detection rules and any identified threats can be very quickly classified as whether they're people, vehicles, aircraft, that sort of thing. And there's also the added capability to distinguish between friend and foe on site using third party hardware, equipping uh, the security staff with transceivers, that sort of thing, so that we can very quickly isolate them from the normal alarms. These days, ground based radar is pretty affordable, very robust, and needs very little maintenance. It's also very simple to operate and can be quite easily integrated into many existing CCTV and video management systems. But the main thing we're really with radar is that because we can cover very large areas, very little infrastructure is required when you compare this to more traditional detection systems. How radar works? Radar can very accurately measure the range to an object by sending a pulse of energy at a target and then measuring the time it takes to return. And because we know the speed that the energy travels, which is basically the speed of light, and the time it takes to get a return echo from the target, radar can then very accurately measure the distance of the target and also the bearing of the target away from the sensor as well. So now we'll discuss types of radar, so which types of system are going to be more suitable for various applications. So probably the first place to start with this is the frequency selection, which is very important depending on the application that the radar is intended to be used for. For instance, a low frequency radars are generally very long range and typically used in weather, military and navigation applications, and, and they've got capabilities to see hundreds of miles. The downside of this is they're generally pretty low resolution unless they use a lot of power. Obviously, this isn't particularly important when you're looking at aircraft and ship hundreds of miles away, but it is important if you're trying to track an intruder at three kilometres away on the perimeter of your site. Because of this, high frequency radars have been specifically designed for tracking people and present a much higher resolution radar image to the software, reducing the chance that an important object like an intruder will disappear into the clutter of a fence or buildings or anything else which is around on that site. But generally, ground-based radars designed for security use, they sort of vary between a low frequency of about 3 gigahertz or S-band to a high frequency of about 76, 77 gigahertz, which is the frequency range we operate in, which is called W-band or millimeter wavelength. And the most common bands which tend to be used in security applications are X-band, K-band and W-band, each of which have their own pretty unique properties, and we'll go through those shortly. High frequency radars tend to have much better range resolution than, than lower frequency radars, which leads to higher accuracy and much lower false alarm rates. So this increases the system's value and its reliability. And since the useful line of sight on ranges on, on many security sites, such as airports, government facilities, CPNI type applications, and, and also VIP residents, at not great distances really, about a mile or less is, is quite common. But this means that high frequency, high resolution radars can often be best suited for these applications. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go through some of the options with the frequency selection. 
So this is the sort of frequency spectrum that's available out there really, going from low frequency on this side as we move across, frequency increases, and as we move from left to right, the wavelength decreases, actually gets smaller. So starting off in this VHF band over here, these radars, usually below about three megahertz, they've got a long history behind them basically. The first radar sets were developed here before and during the, the Second World War. Later, they're, they're still being used for early warning radars for extremely long range, so they're often called over the horizon radars and these frequency bands are currently experiencing a bit of a comeback because stealth technologies don't have the desired effect of these extremely low frequencies. Uh, the UHF band around here, this frequency band, which is about from 300 megahertz to 1 gigahertz, uses specialized radar sets have been developed, which are used as uh, military early warning radar. These frequencies are damped only very slightly by weather phenomenon, and, and thus they can offer a very long range. Uh, the X-band radars, which is around this sort of area, between 8 and 12 gigahertz. In this particular band, the ratio of wavelength to the antenna size means that relatively small Small antennas can be used to achieve pretty good angular accuracy, but range is restricted for smaller targets. These are generally used by military as airborne radars, and this frequency band is also used in the civil, well, and military applications actually for maritime navigation, and as well as the K band, which sits around about the 60 gigahertz frequency range. As uh, emitted frequency increases, the attention in the atmosphere increases as well, but the possible accuracy and range resolution increases at the same time. This means that larger ranges can't really be achieved very much and radar applications in this frequency range are for example airfield surveillance or surface movement radar as well as obviously the, the ground-based surveillance radars uh, that are out there in the market as well. Within the W band sits around here this is between 75 to 76 gigahertz. Short range radar sets can be used in automotive engineering as parking aids, brake assist functions, automatic accident avoidance and things like that. And high attenuation through molecular scattering from oxygen molecules at this frequency prevents them from mutual interference. So you can use lots of them in the same place. Above 76 gigahertz, transmission is good and allows for good range and high resolution. That's the operating range that uh, the Navtech radars sit in. As we move into the N band, which is sort of above 100 uh, gigahertz, the radar modules in this frequency range become known as, as a terahertz radar, and full body scanners take advantage of the fact that although these frequencies can easily penetrate dry and non-conductive substances, they, they can't penetrate the skin deeper than a few millimeters due to the human skin. So they're quite often used in things like body scanners at airports and that sort of thing. So to summarize this in really, in general, low frequency, uh, large wavelength bands can detect large objects at very large distances, but resolution does improve with increases in frequency with the shorter wavelength. And although the detectable range does decrease, it's well within more than acceptable ranges for ground-based and drone detection surveillance, for instance. So moving on from frequency, ground surveillance radars in particular can also be generally divided into two very distinct categories. Scanning systems, which will scan over 360 degrees, can provide wide area surveillance over very large areas and have the advantage of doing this from a single location. Usually a rotating antenna is used, but there are also systems with non-rotating electronic scanning technologies as well. There's also quite a lot of commercially available fixed or staring radars. These provide fixed coverage with limited or no scanning capability, and they can also cover very large areas. But they can also be configured to detect intruders crossing very narrow areas between the perimeter and a building, for instance. However, you're probably going to need multiple units to cover large and complex sites. And quite often, a site will have a combination of fixed staring radars and the scanning systems to cover the both the wide areas and also narrow gaps between the buildings and that sort of thing. Okay, so fixed or staring panels, as we call them, they've got the advantage they're pretty low cost. Obviously, there's no moving part, but if you have got very large open areas or complex sites, then multiple units will probably be required. As they're fixed, they're always looking at the area of interest. And depending on the technology, they may also have a relatively wide height coverage, up to 20 degrees for some of them. So you can accommodate some changes in elevation. And indeed, specialist systems with very wide elevation coverage are now also available for drone detection. These radars, they generally employ electronic phase scanning to obtain the positional data. A phased array, the electronic steering is much more flexible and requires less maintenance than mechanical scanning of the antenna, but it's not as precise and resolution is usually measured in metres rather than centimetres. Flat panel radars with electronically formed beams 
tend to produce these beams with a, an oval shape, which as, as mentioned before, generally means that if you need to provide a 360 degree coverage, you, you are going to need multiple units. They're generally less suited when 360 degree coverage is required or when you're looking at 100% wide area perimeter surveillance, especially if target behaviour can be complex and unpredictable. In, in these cases, obviously, you're going to need more sensors, which increase the system complexity, the maintenance requirements, and ultimately the cost. And that's a sort of typical example of the sort of coverage patterns you can get two fixed panels on that system there. Moving on to scanning systems, with a, with a constantly scanning system, a narrow beam can be used to focus the energy over a full 360 degrees, uh, maximising the range of the radar. This has some inherent advantages, such as lower power requirements, and also it can achieve much higher resolution. The fact that these are safer for human operators is also a bonus, but the real benefit to these systems is how objects go, are detected and tracked. The modern systems can reliably rotate at 4 hertz or above, and a scanning system can create a very high resolution resolution radar image to the processing software every sweep so it can very quickly and reliably detect any changes in its clutter map which we discussed in part one of this presentation. The software knows from previous images which objects are stationary and which are moving and using this information it can then calculate the location, speed and direction of the moving objects from these radar images. Because of this we can all moving and indeed stationary objects can be tracked regardless of the direction of movement and having a narrow beam also reduces the likelihood of interference to nearby systems which is especially important at airports. Although a narrow beam is used some of this radar energy can be refocused down to the ground uh, using a diffuser or COSEC lens is, is how we term it. And this can be used to eliminate any dead spots but also improve coverage where you have got undulating ground conditions as well. Okay so moving on to types of radar technology really there's two main ones really which are used in uh, commercially available systems and they generally tend to use either FMCW or frequency modulated continuous wavelength radar technology or Doppler technology or in some cases a combination of both of these. Both radar technologies share the same principles of operation i.e. They, they all measure the time of flight from when the transmitted signal leaves the radar hits a reflecting target and returns back, but there are some important differences to be aware of when considering which system is best used on a particular site. So we start with Doppler. Basically, uh, Doppler radars, they can use completely without or with some mechanical motion, but most commercially available systems tend to be of the fixed or flat panel type. The way Doppler works it uses the frequency change in the reflection of a moving object to detect it and then uses this information to calculate the speed and distance of that object. Flat panel radars generally use electronically formed beams to produce the fixed coverage pattern, usually making an oval shape. In practice, as previously discussed, this means that multiple units will be needed to provide full 360 degree coverage if that's what's required. Electronic phase scanning is then used to obtain positional data. Phased array antenna is used and the common antenna pattern is usually steered electronically. The electronic steering is much more flexible and obviously requires less maintenance than mechanical scanning of the antenna, but it's not as precise and resolution can generally be measured in meters on a lot of these systems. Uh, because they rely on objects moving towards or away from the detector, Doppler radars are inherently less sensitive to movement across the plane of detection and therefore care needs to be taken when designing a system to take this into account. As this type of radar does rely on movement, there will also be a small delay in alarm generation. For instance, a person might need to move three metres before they're detected. OK, so frequency modulated continuous wave radar uh, is a form of radar where the frequency of the transmitted signal is varied over a defined time period. The received signal does exactly the same, but is obviously delayed by the time of flight. The difference between these two signals is directly proportional to the time of flight, which in turn is proportional to the range. And using this principle, FMCW radars can very accurately measure the position of an object and are capable of extremely accurate range resolution. Less than 15 centimetre resolution is not particularly difficult to achieve. FMCW has the advantage that a target doesn't need to be moving to be detected. And they're quite often used for things like detecting um, small objects on runways at airports and that sort of thing. But the system creates a very detailed map of each detection slice, which is then analysed for changes after each scan and alarms are then raised if the required detection criteria are met. The majority of FMCW radars scan a full 360 degrees, but there are also examples of fixed systems for specialist applications as well. And by using a narrow beam, either by scanning mechanically or electronically using beam steering techniques, the position of an object can also be very accurately determined. And a physically scanning system will therefore need much less power 
as the beam is concentrated into a much narrow area. And as we discussed before, it's in then inherently much more safe to operate around people. The principles really, uh, some sort of typical applications for radar, anything really with ports, harbours, prisons, generally anywhere with big open areas, but not necessarily so. They can also see down narrow gaps as well. As we've talked about before, you can create multiple detection zones. This is an example using our witness front end and showing multiple detection zones each of which can have their own um, detection rules. So we can define an alarm based on the object's location, speed, its size, direction of its movement. It can also look at stationary objects such as FOD on runways. Detection rules can be subject to time schedules, how many objects, and you can also use multiple rules for additional filtering. So moving on to a, a bit more of a specific application, really, this is an airport we looked at recently. You can see that by using relatively few sensors we can cover very large areas both inside and outside the boundary of the site further improving the situational awareness for any security operators so you can, they could set an external zone for seaborne approach to the perimeter that probably be active 24 hours a day different zone for actually incursion across the perimeter itself runway areas could be covered differently as well as apron areas within the airport itself and any maintenance yards and they would all, all probably work on their own individual time schedules Within the airport itself, there's usually some very specific detection capabilities required for uh, the critical point line monitoring on airports, where they need the airport operator needs to know that only aircraft are, are operating in particular areas. And to do this, you need very high definition. And these lines can then be created, such as on the map using the white lines there. Uh, but most importantly, all of these zones, they've got their very own unique detection and classification rules and create specific alert requirements around the, the operating schedule of the airport itself. Summarising really, a radar will work in pretty much any weather and light condition just when you need it the most. The infrastructure cost can be pretty low and as radar covers a, a very large area, it's extremely flexible and can be adapted to the environment. Uh, minimising false alarms and ensuring the, the operator's confidence in the system. It's got extremely comprehensive advanced warning capabilities, giving better and quicker response to threats and also providing real-time tracking for live interception on sites. As we've discussed, there are many factors to take into account, but the important thing to remember is, is we're here to help. If you need anything, we're available. Many thanks for your time and look out for our next uh, CPD presentation.